So thanks, guys. I only really have a couple minutes, so I'm going to make this kind of short, really brief. One of the most important things that we don't talk about is the amount of sugar we take in. The average American, if you have a hemoglobin A1C of 5.6 or 5.4, you're taking in 40 teaspoons of sugar. If it's higher than that, you're taking in more. Your goal is to get down to six teaspoons. Sugar is. So if you're going to bake stuff at home, high is a wonderful option. It's basically half the amount of sugar. But a better, the best options are natural sugars. These are natural sweeteners that have existed forever. Um, agave nectar. This is something that comes from Mexico. It's from an agave plant. Very, very healthy. Every health food store will have it. The other one is stevia. Coca-Cola and Pepsi have their versions. Found at almost every supermarket. It's called Truvea or uh, Purvea much healthier. So the glycemic index on these are much lower than white sugar. So you want to try to get to a natural sweetener rather than something man-made. I mean, if you notice, Splenda's not up here. Man-made. Anything man-made typically is not so healthy. Because once we muck around with it, we've got to take the value out of it. Um, let me quickly do oils. Just about every oil out there is not good for you, except for Extra virgin olive oil. Really good olive oil. If you taste it, it's going to be peppery. You'll be like, you cough. Most people don't know that. If you really go to an olive oil tasting thing, you taste a whole bunch of olive oils, and it'll be really peppery. So always look for extra virgin. If you're going to cook, you're going to fry something, do canola oil. Because olive oil is not really good for fried foods. So canola oil is still a relatively good oil. Um, the other oils, those are what we call omega-9s. Omega-9s are also nuts, any kinds of nuts. If you can tolerate them, if you don't have any allergies or no stomach problems with them, fantastic source of nuts. If you're trying to lose weight, no more than a handful. And none of the sugar-coated stuff. You want it raw, unsalted, or roasted. The other really great vegetable, and I always encourage my women to do it, avocados. They have good fats, and protein. So you really want to try to have avocados if you like them. Yeah, you could do guacamole with it. It's okay, as long as you're not putting sugar in it. Because some people, some recipes actually add sugar in it. So that's not something you want to do. The other thing you want to do is try to go to more plant-based foods. Less meat. I always tell my patients, try it just once a week. Go meatless. It's only one day away from meat. But we know from epidemiological studies done throughout the world, People who eat less meat are healthier. They don't have as much fat. They have less risk for almost every disease out there. So try one day not to eat carbs. And that's a hard thing about being a vegetarian. I'm talking about a vegetarian who's actually eating vegetables. Because there's a lot of carbitarians out there. Many eat processed food all day long. So, you know, start off eating good vegetables, but at nighttime have something based out of beans. So what are your plant-based proteins that you can substitute meat with? Beans, any kind of beans. Black beans, tender beans, navy beans, pink beans, white beans, cannelli beans, lentils. You can also do tofu um, or tempeh. This is tempeh. Most people know what tofu is a little bit squishy. Tempeh is a little bit harder. It's a soy-based protein, but it's a little bit harder and it can be flavored a little bit easier. My, I like tempeh better than tofu. I don't like squishy things. I like crunchier things. So. Um, Let's see what other, and then avocados and nuts are going to be your plant-based.